Building iOS apps is really, really hard. You have to learn Swift and all the APIs and frameworks that Apple provides. But what if you are a web developer and still want to publish on the App Store or you're a business that has a website and still want to have an app on the App Store? Well, now you can with the help of WebView Gold. And today I'm going to show you how easy it is to just grab your website or your web app and publish it on the App Store as a native iOS app. So let's get into the code. If you have a website or a web app that you want to publish to the App Store, then WebView Gold is the way to go. So when I first taken a look at WebView Gold, I was blown away. So what you're getting is an Xcode project and all you have to do is just add in your URL and basically that's it. Of course, there are a ton of features optionally you can set up push notifications in-app purchases ads and so forth so also about the design you can set up all of that inside a config file it's really really uh, easy to do no coding required actually so uh, this tutorial will be about uh, webview gold so how you can use it what's it about and um, yeah hopefully you will check them out the link is in the description and uh, there's also a sale so go ahead and check that link out so this this tutorial will be separated in two parts. First of all, I will talk about how WebView Gold is structured, what it is, and the second part is a hands-on implementation into uh, Xcode. So we are going to create uh, an iOS app from our own site. So uh, let's get into it. So let's dive into the features what WebView Gold can give us. As you can see, it's also for Android. We are going to cover iOS in this tutorial. Okay, so uh, no coding required. Yes, you can just add in your very own URL and that's just it. Uh, also, it's approver guaranteed. So if App Store, for example, uh, rejects your app, they will give you a full refund. And also they will help you uh, manage all of that. Uh, if there's an issue with the App Store approver, they will guide you with that. Uh, also, there's an exceptional performance, yes, because they are using not UI uh, WebView, but the WK WebView. Uh, also, yeah, uh, this is selling on Envato Toots, so that's, uh, it, it, as they say, it was among the 23 best iOS app templates of 2021, so that's a good one. Uh, free updates, so it will be updated forever, so you get free updates, just one-time purchase and their support is awesome and uh, I do guarantee that. I just mailed them about a question when I was preparing this tutorial and they answered within three hours. That's awesome. So, and you will see what that question was. I will let you on when I'm just going to show you this inside uh, our Xcode. As you can see, it's easy to set up. You just uh, set up your URL. Also, you can set up a standard uh, website with like a local HTML. You don't have to use um, a website. You just you you can use HTML inside your bundle in Xcode. So that's also uh, super nice to have. Uh, also, you can have this as a backup. Let's say you don't have internet connection and you just use that as a backup. So that's really really cool to have. Yeah, the 100% uh, of your content, of course, you you decide what you want to display there. Uh, offline mode, yeah, so you may have this kind of uh, pop-up, like this uh, view where you it says that, okay, you are offline, do you want to try again? Or you will be able to just present a separate, like this static HTML uh, um, in instead of your uh, website. Uh, performance, yes, uh, classic web view on iOS. It's using UI web, web view technology. And, uh, and recently, uh, iOS supports also WK web view. That's their new way to go, which is much, much faster. And WebView Gold is using uh, uh, WK WebView. By the way, I have taken a look at the Xcode project, went through all of the files. It's really, really nicely written. Okay. Uh, external links, yes. So uh, this is kind of like presenting it inside the WK view and uh, uh, pushing on links. Uh, they will be shown as kind of natively, but you can also uh, have the preference of, for example, some of the links to be shown as an external link. So they will be shown in this kind of Safari or uh, uh, whatever uh, other web browser you have on your app. 
outside of your app. So that's really, really nice. And um, yeah, 100% uh, responsive. Splash screen, that's a really interesting part. So you can customize your splash screen. I will show you how to do that in Xcode. Um, in app tab, you can also have that. Custom CSS styles if you need to. Cookies, cache mechanism, that's really, really nice to have. Maybe you want to delete the cache. I will show you how to do that. Uh, custom user agent in identification. Yeah, that's for uh, the web part. Media downloader, file and camera uploads, push notifications. So this is really, really interesting. You may have push notifications with Firebase, OneSignal, uh, Bubble IO. So that's really, really nice to have. Uh, native dialogues, you will see them pop up uh, when we launch the app. Uh, audio and video geolocation uh, advertising. We have Google ad mobs like banners or full screen pop ups, Facebook audience networks. And it's really, really nice to have. Uh, QR code scanner APIs, in app purchases, uh, offline back uh, uh, or fallback mode, as I already told you, dark mode, native sharing API. Uh, of course, it's always up to date and free support. So there's a lot to cover here, as you can see. And uh, this is the price. Go ahead and check out their sale. And there's one for iOS and one for Android. I'm going to cover iOS, of course. And also there's a full service. Go ahead and check them out. The link is in the description. And uh, basically that's it. Let's just jump. And there's a lot of testimonials. Go ahead and check them out. So enough of the feature talk. Let's jump right into the Xcode project. So after you make the purchase, you will be able to download their Xcode project. And uh, it will be something like this. Uh, you will have uh, the actual project and the documentation HTML. Now they do have a really nice documentation, but why bother? You are going to learn all about it in this tutorial. So one thing to note here is that you are going to need CocoaPods. Uh, they are using a lot of CocoaPods and that's fine. That's perfectly okay. Uh, one thing to note here, and this is the thing that they helped me with like in three hours after I uh, asked them this question. How do you run this on an M1 chipped MacBook Pro? Because that's what I have. And I had this uh, issue when I just uh, launched the app. I don't know if you can see this. This is, uh, it, it just failed to build. So they were really, really responsive. What you needed to do, and they, I just found out about them. Uh, you want to go to your applications and then go to Xcode, right click on it and get info. And under there, you will see if you just uh, scroll, uh, you will see that opening using Rosetta. So this is what you want to do if you have an M1 chip MacBook Pro. Otherwise, it will work perfectly. Okay, so that's that. Uh, let's just go back to our Xcode project right over here. And uh, you can just go ahead and open it up with the workspace. Again, this is a CocoaPods uh, powered <laughs> Xcode project. So you want to open up the workspace. So let's just build and uh, open that up with a double click. Let me just resize our project so you can see it better. And what I usually do, uh, the pods are already in here. So you can see that the pods are already installed with this download. But I usually just, just to make sure that everything is working okay, I just open up terminal uh, and uh, just install the pods again. So what uh, you have to do is just uh, go ahead and type in CD, a space, drag and drop the root folder of your project, hit return and then pod install. And uh, yeah, that will install all of the uh, necessary pods. And there we go, we are all set up. That's why it was really super easy and fast to just install because they are already in and there. But just to make sure that we are on uh, the right side. Okay, so uh, this is the project. As you can see, it's really nice. It's iOS 12, so it's supporting iOS 12. iPhone, iPad support is uh, there. Landscape, portrait support, really, really cool. Okay, so what do you want to do actually? Well, first of all, you want to go into your web view and there is your config file. So actually this is the only thing you need to do. Just go in there into the config file and change whatever you'd like. Also, you might want to change the splash screen. So uh, this is an animated GIF. Uh, just name, uh, rename this 
so yeah, just create a, a GIF and name it Splash. Or if you don't really want to do that, I don't really recommend this to just uh, mess around with the other parts of the code, but you could just go into the Splash Screen View Controller and just rename this UI image. Now, this is not recommended because yeah, if you get an update, this will be overridden. So make sure that you just name your Splash Screen, Jeff, whatever, uh, to Splash, and that will uh, come to the animation really, really nicely. Okay, so config. This is the only part that you need to touch. Uh, uh, let's just see what we got here. And there's a lot of documentation. Okay, so purchase code. Uh, you want to, first of all, add in your purchase code. I would just add in mine and uh, we will come back to add our host uh, after that. Okay, so now that the purchase code is in, all you have to do is just add your host and web view URL. Now, I'm going to go ahead and uh, use for this example, our own website, so rebeloper.com. And uh, what you want to do is copy this out, so everything with the HTTPS and add it on the web view URL only. So just paste it in there. Now on the host, you want to just go with rebeloper.com. Okay, that's how you'd like it. And as you can see, there are a lot of uh, instructions in the comments also. And uh, basically that's it. Let's just build and run and see how this looks like. I'm going to build this on the iPhone 13 simulator and let's just see this. So there we go. It's really, really nice. You already saw that there's the hand gesture, like that was the splash screen. And then we have kind of an activity indicator. We are going to talk about that also. And uh, it's right over here, our website, our very own website on an iOS app. It's really, really nice. Uh, let's just uh, see what we got here. Cool, super awesome. So let's just go into tools maybe. Really great. Okay, so let's take a look at what else can we do because yeah, basically that's it. That's all you have to do. Let me just go ahead and expand this so we may see anything that's under the console. And uh, let me just take a tour of whatever else we can have customized. Uh, dark mode web view URL. So think of this as uh, you will have kind of um, a specific uh, web URL for your app on your domain. So why not just create a dark mode web view URL? This is really handy when, uh, and this will be used when the system detects that, okay, this is in light mode or in dark mode. Okay, uh, use local HTML folder. Now this is uh, really cool. Let's just set this to true. And uh, you can see the local HTML folder right over here. Let's just, right over here. So you just add in here whatever you'd like into the index. Let's just build and run again and see uh, what this index has. Well, it's it's uh, pretty uh, straight for like really, really simple. But uh, yeah, you can use that if you want to. So then you don't have to just uh, go to the web. You are just using this local HTML file. Let's just wait for this to build. And uh, yeah, I usually wouldn't recommend this because then you are just using static stuff, but you can just have that also right over here. As you can see, here we have our local HTML. It's really, really nice. Okay, so uh, let's stop this and uh, get this back to false. And uh, let's take a look at the open all external URLs. Uh, in Safari by default. So let me just show you what this means. Let's just build and run. And uh, this uh, will open up the Safari uh, external uh, URLs inside the Safari. And I will show you what uh, that looks like. Our store is actually not at rebeloper.com, it's at store.rebeloper.com. So that will be open up in uh, Safari by default. So let's just have this and let's just go ahead and tap on store. Now you see that is opened up inside Safari. It's really, really good to have. And uh, yeah, you may just use this for externals. Also, let me just stop this. You may uh, whitelist links 
or backlist Safari links. And this will override uh, that uh, Safari ex open external all externals in Safari by default. Uh, prevent, uh, uh, prevent over scroll. Yes, so this is kind of the bounciness of the scroll. Let me just set this to false so it will not prevent it. Uh, it says that uh, the most cases you want to prevent it. This makes it a little bit iOS-like, but make sure you check it out in your own site. How does this behave? Uh, otherwise, just set it back to true and that will uh, disable the scroll. And now I can just make this bouncy. It's really, really nice. Okay, uh, let's just set back that also. Disable callout. So uh, this is a uh, disabled callout for 3D touch callout on Windows of your links. It depends on your website. Uh, then we have uh, delete cache. So you want to delete the cache of your website on each and every launch. You can set this to true. Uh, OK button. You will see uh, buttons appear. Uh, OK. Uh, you just want to set it maybe to OK or whatever. Agreed. Big status bar. User loading sign in. And then we have this hide vertical scroll bar. Let's just set this to true and also you can hide the horizontal scroll bar if needed you can see there is a quite a lot to go through here but uh, we will get to the end of it uh, i just want to make sure that uh, you will see everything that this uh, nice project has to offer let's just see if the scroll bar has been hidden that's right we have hidden it okay i just leave that as is enable swipe uh, uh, swipe pagination that means that whenever you swipe back well I'm doing I'm not going to present this in the simulator it's really hard to swipe but you can set that also orientation iPhone auto or orientation iPad auto you can change that to portrait or landscape uh, user agent iPhone iPad advertise uh, activate first run dialog now this is set to the true and it will just pop up a uh, welcome uh, alert that will say thank you for downloading this app or whatever you want to and okay is the button for that dialogue with, which I was talking about earlier. As for push for permissions on the first run, you may enable or disable uh, this because maybe you don't want to use uh, uh, push notifications. Uh, we didn't see this in our app because I have already run this in the simulator. Or let me just uh, remove that and um, then we will see all of these. So if I just delete this, remove the app, delete the app, let's delete that and let's build and run. You will see all of these pop-ups come up. Okay, let's just see that. As you can see, yes, ask app not to track. Uh, do you want to send push notifications? Well, let's allow that. And here we go. Welcome. Thank you for downloading this app. And this is the OK button that I was talking about. OK, uh, yes, offline title. Uh, this is about the, the view, the view controller that will be presented when you are offline. Of course, I'm recording this and I do need some uh, online presence. So you just uh, want to uh, test this out and add up all of these strings for uh, for that to customize. Activate rate my app dialog. Yes, true. Now this is automatic. So iOS will take care of this. Set this to true. And after a few launches, it will appear. Maybe on our demo also. Activate Facebook friends dialog. Uh, let's set this to true. So uh, this will, of course, yeah, you have to set up the title and uh, the text. And you also want to set up these two buttons and the URL to your Facebook page. So that's all about Facebook. Maybe you want to make them like your Facebook page. Let's just see this uh, dialog in action. And uh, then if we tap on that, you will be taken to a web browser where, of course, if the user is uh, signed in to Facebook, then they will be also taken to the Facebook app. Let's just wait for this to launch and uh, you will see that in action. Let's just wait and uh, waving hand, that's a splash screen. And then, well, actually, I think that's again because of the first launch. 
uh, you will get to uh, experience this uh, on the first launch. Okay, uh, let's see what else do we have here. Image downloaded, title, image not found. This is if you want to have a downloader inside your app. Status bar, background color, that's on the top. Dark mode, background color. And you can also have, this is as of iOS 13, you can set it black to or white. Okay, prevent sleep. This is set to false now. This means that it will not dim. Um, QR code links, uh, show external links. Now, uh, this is for deep linking. You can have this with uh, whatever deep link you want to have. This is a really nice example in the comments. Uh, remain splash option now this is set to false now this will if you set it to true it will the splash screen will appear till the content is loading custom CSS string you can add it right over here and alert message if there's something the data is missing something went wrong please try again if there's a language, you can append the language, uh, offline uh, local HTML switch. So if you want to switch to that offline HTML when there's no internet connection, you can set this to true. Uh, extensions array for whatever extensions are allowed for upload and download, you can just uh, set them here. Loading spring color. Now this is the indicator uh, when you, you saw that when the page was loading. You can just change that and the background of that uh, splash screen. In a purchase bundle identifier, uh, this has to be set up in the App Store Connect and uh, shared secret. Of course, you want to set that also up there. Uh, what do you want to uh, the app to navigate to upon success? and uh, uh, also upon the subscription expiring. So you want to change this to one of your website pages. Uh, one signal, if you want to set up push notifications with one signal, you want to set these IDs right over there. Do you want to enable, uh, enhance URL, reload user? You will get all of these uh, and you can decide when you uh, use one signal. Also, you can have it as a Firebase. Uh, AdMob banner is our next one. You can have AdMob interstitial ID also. And do you want to show the banner ad or the full screen ad? You want to set these to true, okay? Uh, and how much time do you want to wait for these ads to be shown? Also, there's Facebook ads. You want to set this to true. You want to set the Facebook ad ID as usual. And you want to have a time, timed ads and you want to set the seconds that you want to wait for Facebook to load your ad. And the others, uh, you don't really want to touch these. These are just constants. Okay, and it's really, really comprehensive. It's really customizable, flexible, and it's super fast to just grab your website and put it inside the app. Now, finally, what you want to change is uh, just go right over here and you want to change your display name and your bundle identifier. And of course your version as you are iterating through when you are uploading to the App Store. But that's uh, something that you would do anyway when you are doing uploads to the App Store for uh, submission and of course approval. Okay, so that's it. WebView Gold, go ahead and check them out. The link is in the description. Let me just go back there. The link is in the description and uh, go ahead and save 25% with the back to school sale. Uh, I believe, yes, it is valid until the 31st of October uh, this year. So go ahead and check them out. I highly recommend them. If you do have a super simple or a, a web app, maybe you have a website or a web app, then you can have this on an iOS app on the App Store. Go ahead and check them out. It's really, really awesome to have a web app inside an iOS app and then publish it onto the App Store. Now, if you do like these kind of videos, go ahead and hit that like button. And while you are at it, make sure to hit that notification bell to get notified of new videos. Videos like these ones, go ahead and check them out. I talk a lot about Swift and Swift UI in general. And as usual, I will see you in the next one.